Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, I'm going to get you up to speed on how you can use your TI-83 or TI-84 calculator and really just do some basic operations and get into it. Uh, specifically, really what I'll cover is how you can turn this thing on and off, you know, when you first get it, how some of the buttons work. Uh, I know they can be very intimidating, they got lots of things on there. Uh, what your home screen is, and of course some basic operations like how you add, subtract, multiply, divide, and use that enter button. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab our calculators and see what we can do. The very first part of this is really just figuring out how you get your calculator on. If you look near the bottom left, you'll see the on button, and every time you press that, it should come to life, and I have a blinking cursor showing that indeed it is on. Now, if I want to shut this off, I can see that the same button is also my off button. But in order to make it go off, I have to press the blue second button, and then go down here and press the off button. So I'll go second off and now it's off. Now the good news is a lot of these uh, calculators have an automatic shutoff feature so if you don't use it for a few minutes it will shut off automatically but I think it's a good habit to uh, shut it off if you know you're not going to be using it for a bit so you just press the on button, second on, and that will shut it off again. Now that leads us into a great area on how exactly you want to view these buttons on your calculator. Now the buttons themselves have a lot of different functions but many of them usually have three different things that they do. Uh, the main thing that they do will usually be printed on the button themselves. So here I have like a much larger version of this button right here. And the very front of it has the LN. Of course that stands for our natural log. So we will say that this is the primary function of the button. So if I just press that button, it'll do the natural log. Or if I press this button over here, the 6, since that's the main thing on it, it'll give me the number 6. Now if I want to access some of the other features, the next thing that I want to look at is whatever is in this top left um, associated with my second button. With my calculator, this is everything in blue and it's just above the button. Usually uh, these calculators will color coordinate things, so it, it, they keep things the same color as the second button. I've seen some where the second button is orange, and sure enough, above all of them, they'll have a little orange secondary function. So let's call this the secondary function. Now lastly, there's an alpha uh, option for these graphing calculators. So in green, you'll notice a lot of different uh, letters like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In fact, I have the whole alphabet up here. And if I want to access any of those, I have to press my green alpha button. And then I'll go ahead and I'll hit the button associated with that letter. So I'll just say alpha. Now we won't be getting into any of the secondary or alpha functions yet. We'll mainly stick with those primary ones. So stay focused to what's on the button itself, um, and that's a good indication of what we can do. Now, we can turn it on and off, and now we want to know that this main screen that we're on, with just a blinking cursor, that is what we consider our home screen. Uh, in other videos, you'll see me, I'll be doing some stuff on graphs and some statistics. Um, and this is not usually where you end up doing a lot of your calculations. If you just want to add and subtract, you want to be on that home screen. If you find that you are on any other screen and you want to get back to the home screen, you usually want to quit out of what you're on. You can find quit on the, the TI-83 or 84, it's just above mode. And notice how you have to press the second feature in order to go back to that home screen. So I'm going to press second, quit and now I'm back on the home screen. So uh, don't worry on how I get to that graphing part just yet. It, I could be into all kinds of other places in the calculator. You know, here I'm in the memory management screen and oh no, I wanna do some quick calculations. No worries, just press second quit and now you're back at the home screen. Uh, it's also really good to know that if you are borrowing a calculator from someone and you really wanna get back to here, that's how you do it. All right, so now that we know that uh, how the buttons work and where our home screen is, it's time to do some basic arithmetic and take this thing for a test drive. Uh, I have some quick, simple problems here that you'll see me go through, and we'll be able to use these to test out some of our buttons. So I already have it on the home screen. I can tell by my blinking cursor up there. And I want to do something like 23 minus 17. We'll be using the primary functions of the button, so I'll just press 2, 3, Notice how subtraction is over here on the left. These are many of our basic operations. Minus 17. And when I want to actually have the calculator compute this, I'll press the enter button down here, and it'll give me the answer. Looks like the answer is 6. 
Now, if I have a slightly uh, more complicated problem, maybe one that involves parentheses, you'll also find buttons for those. Those happen to be right above my 8 and 9, uh, so I can even put those in. I'll put it in exactly as I see it here, and I'll press the Enter button again when I want to get to that equal sign and actually have it run through the computations. So open parentheses, 201 plus 4, close parentheses, and divide by 5. Now you'll notice that when it gets to the division part, it actually put a little slash mark rather than a division symbol. That's okay, it means the same thing, but just be aware of it. All right, let's go ahead and press Enter, and it gives us an answer of 41. All right, it's looking great. If you do have a problem with parentheses, probably a good idea to uh, type those into the calculator as well. Uh, many of these graphing calculators will follow the order of operations, so if I did not have those parentheses in there, it would actually take the 4 divided by 5 first, and then go ahead and add 200. So just something to be aware of. All right, let's go ahead and try another one with parentheses. Uh, this one is 3 multiplied by the quantity 7 minus 11. So it doesn't have a multiplication symbol in there. I'm going to go ahead and put one in. So I'm going to put 3 multiplied by, I'm just pressing the multiplication symbol here. Uh, and multiplication on this calculator has a little star, so that's how I know it's multiplying. Open parentheses, 7 minus 11. Close parentheses, and now I'll press Enter to evaluate this. All right. Now, of course, there's a lot of other functions that this calculator can do. It can do roots, it can do logarithms, squares. Um, and if you want to do any of those other functions, um, usually you can find them as a secondary button. So we'll just kind of sneak one in real quick as we do the square root of 4 plus 3 squared. You'll notice that the square root is actually right uh, above this button here. It's in blue, so I'm going to have to press the secondary button in order to put that square root on there. Then when I get to 3 squared, it's the same button, but I will not press the secondary button to do that uh, since its primary function is to square things. All right, so let's give this a try. So let's go ahead and go second, square root, and now I can see it's on my screen, and I can put in the 4. With this particular one, it also opens up a set of parentheses in case I have lots of things underneath my square root. Uh, in this instance, I only have that number 4, so I'm going to close that parentheses. Now I'll say plus 3. And I want to square this 3, so now I'm going to press the same button again, but I'm not going to use that secondary button. And sure enough, little 2 shows up next to my 3. So now I have the square root of 4 plus 3 squared. I can press the Enter button, and I'll take care of those computations. Looks like my answer is 11. Oop, forgot my negative 12 earlier. So for some of the basic functions on this calculator, mainly stick to what is printed on the button itself and you'll be just fine. In other videos, we'll get into more on how to use those more advanced features and of course get into graphing, which is one of the best features of a graphing calculator. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.